I've done better than that. You'd think you'd know his name. Every time you switch on a light or turn on your radio, his contributions are as far-reaching as those of Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton, or even his nemesis, Tom Edison. This mysterious, tall, dark Serbian invented alternating current, wireless communication, the modern electric motor, basic laser and radar technology, X-rays, neon, robotics, remote control and cellular technology, and even Star Wars tactical warfare, all over a hundred years ago. Yet today, who's ever heard of Nikola Tesla? How could history overlook such an incredible legacy? During his last moments on Earth, he no doubt asked himself the same question. Lying in a forgotten hotel room, alone and penniless, now 86 years of age, this is where our story begins. On that final night in January 1943, Nikola reflected on his life in near delirium. The flashes of light. I never had control over the flashes. They are so tormenting. Unstoppable images would flood his mind, accompanied by powerful flashes, like countless times before, due to a strange lifelong condition of his. When the word was spoken to me, the image of the object would appear vividly. And sometimes I was unable to distinguish whether what I saw was tangible or not. This caused me great discomfort and anxiety. In the murky light of the hotel room, he'd speak with ghosts from his past, phantoms waiting for him to succumb. He remembered triumphant moments when he was struck with the vision of his world-transforming electric motor, the same design that's used everywhere today. Like a flash of lightning, in an instant, the truth was revealed. He was so sure of his breakthrough that he felt compelled to share it. He sailed for New York City, the seat of the modern world. Upon Nikola's arrival, he'd see a busy, gas-lit metropolis painted black by a century of coal, wood, and fuel oil residue. He knew at once this era would come to an end with his electrical innovation. He would go to work and forge his dream at first, digging ditches, then he'd create his machines. Soon he'd become the quintessential American success story, transforming himself from a penniless immigrant into a legend of his time. The glitterati of New York's finest would flock to his laboratory to witness the spectacular high-voltage demonstrations. Notables such as Mark Twain, John Muir, Sarah Bernhardt, Stanford White, and Teddy Roosevelt, and many others attended. But one person not present was his ruthless competitor, Thomas Edison. Nikola would recall the War of the Currents, AC versus DC power. At the time, the electrification of the world was at stake. Alternating current's too damn dangerous. He's using tens of thousands of volts. DC only uses hundreds. I'm sure you can see the danger. Tesla, Tesla, Nikola Tesla. A man who could never take a joke. There was only one kind of power system that could feed cities all over the country that would allow Edison's incandescent bulbs to burn brightly. And Nikola had it. Tom Edison fought against it, tooth and nail. Hell, there are no rules here. We're trying to accomplish something. The bitter Edison would even resort to electrocuting stray animals, including a rogue elephant, to incite public fear of Tesla's AC system. But Tesla would ultimately triumph over Edison by electrifying the Chicago World's Fair in 1893. It was a smashing success. Then, he and partner George Westinghouse created the world's first hydroelectric system at Niagara Falls. It was an incredible gamble at the time, and no one was sure it would work, except Tesla, the man of the hour. Nikola was now at the peak of his glory. He took to wearing formal clothes and wearing white gloves when starting experiments. 
He was a mystic who wrote and recited poetry and could speak six languages, yet he couldn't help his idiosyncrasies. People had no idea that he battled hallucinogenic episodes daily. I have seen all the air around me filled with tongues of living flame. Their intensity, instead of diminishing, increased with time. He was also described as a maniac for cleanliness and would avoid handshakes and fought an array of deep-seated phobias and compulsions. I had a violent aversion against the earring of women. The sight of a pearl would almost give me a fit. I would not touch the hair of other people except perhaps at the point of a revolver. I counted the steps in my walks and calculated the cubicle contents of soup plates, coffee cups, and pieces of food. Otherwise, my meal was unenjoyable. All repeated acts or operations I performed had to be divisible by three, and if I missed, I felt impelled to do it all over again, even if it took hours. He learned to control his runaway mind with supreme discipline. Tesla's unquenchable fire drove him onward, working 20-hour days, reaching for perfection. But this was much to the displeasure of socialite Katherine Johnson, his most intimate confidant, and perhaps Tesla's secret lover. Dear Mr. Tesla, I have been thinking of you all day and all evening, as I do so often. Why do you not come to see me? How can you be indifferent to such devotion? They were very close, but this love was not meant to be. Tesla was on a mission dedicated to unlocking the secrets of nature, his greatest obsession. He left little time for relationships or business. Nicola was exceedingly vulnerable in this regard.